today's assignment, you guys are going to be creating your own avatar in Adobe Illustrator. So I want you to start by going to your email. So you're going to open up your Outlook uh, for um, your school email. So you would go to the waffle menu, go to Outlook, get the selfie that you sent to yourself, and you can either right click, save image as, or click on it to make it larger and download. So you're going to download it to your computer so you can place it in Illustrator to start your avatar. Next, I want you to make sure you open up Adobe Illustrator. You're going to go to File, New, choose Print, Change the name to your first name underscore avatar. Change the points to inches. And we're going to make this into a square. So let's do four inches by four inches. And because we're doing a square, we don't have to choose the orientation and create. Now we have our square to get started. I do want you to check your workspace up in the top. So check your workspace, make sure you're working with Essential Classic. Go to View, Fit All in Window, so that you know that your entire artboard is showing. And then I'm, sh I'm teaching from the two column tools. So if you have one column, go ahead and press the top two arrows to do two columns so you can find the tools easily. Next, we're going to bring in our picture for a reference. So you're going to go to File, Place. We're going to go to our Downloads where we downloaded the picture and we're going to select your downloaded selfie and place. If you notice, there's just a little icon. It's not placed in there yet, so I can click and drag it into place. So I'm going to go a little bit longer than my artboard because uh, we have some extra area at the bottom I'm not going to use. I can go to my selection tool and select it. Just make sure it's in my area. And this is a little bit off. It's not quite straight, and I want to straighten my face out a little bit because. I'm just going to be drawing one side of my face and then copying it and flipping it for our avatar. So I want to make sure my face is straight. Next what I want to do is I want to put a guide right in the center. So I'm going to go to View, Guides, I'm sorry, View, Rulers, and Show Rulers. So now we have a ruler up at the top of our page and on the side. And what we can do is we can click on the ruler and drag, and we can drag a guide into place. So I'm going to drag from the side ruler a line right to the middle of my face. And that's going to set, be our guide for the center area. Next, what I want to do, we're going to start our drawing process. So we don't want to change anything with this background or move anything as we are drawing. So we need to go to our Layers window. So over on our window side, about halfway down is Layers, two pages on top of each other it looks like. If you do not see the Layers window over here, you can always go to Window and go to Layers and open up the Layers window. If you notice, this just opened up. So here's our layer that we put our guide and our picture on. I want to make sure that I lock it. So right next to the eyeball, there's an open area. If I click there, it's going to lock that layer. Now I can no longer do anything to that layer. I want to double click where it says layer one and I want to say this is my selfie uh, layer. So right now we can't do anything to this document because we have one layer and it's locked. So down at the bottom of our layers window, there's a plus sign and it says create new layer. I'm going to click to create a new layer and 
want to double click where it says layer two and I'm going to say this is where we're, our, we're going to start our avatar. So I'm going to name it avatar and make sure this layer is selected so that we can now work on this layer. So there's several drawing tools. We've used a lot of the shape tools so far, but there's several drawing tools. I want to show you two of the options that you can work with if you want, but then I'm going to show you the one that I use. It's the one I feel most comfortable with. There's multiple ways to do this. You do your avatar the way that it um, feels comfortable for you. So there's the paintbrush tool. It's one, two, three, four, five down on the right hand side. You can choose your paintbrush tool. You can double click on the paintbrush tool and there's some options. So the fidelity is an important one. Usually it's about in the middle. You can choose accurate, which every little move you make with the um, movement of the cursor, it will pick up. Or you can go to where it smooths out your actions. I like to choose the smooth option and say OK. And I want to show you the difference. So if I brush with the smooth option, it gives us a nice smooth arch. But if I go ahead and double, double click on there and go to the accurate and I do the same movement, there's some movement in that stroke. So the things you have to be aware of when you are using the paintbrush tool and the um, pencil tool, which I'm going to show you next, is this is a stroke. You can see that my stroke is colored in and there's no fill. So it's not really creating a shape and that will um, determine how you are actually doing your artwork. So you need to keep that in mind if you're using the paintbrush tool and you want to close your shape. So if you are using the paintbrush tool, you want to make sure that when you come down here and it's a shape you want to fill in with color later, that you close that up. Um, but uh, that is something that you can decide if you want to use your paintbrush tool. It might be something you want to use to add a few details later on. The other one is the pencil tool. So on the left side, you will really see underneath the shape tool, you'll see the shaper tool. And so if you click and hold on the shaper tool, you can go to the pencil tool. Once you're on the pencil tool, you can double click on here and we have the same options up at the top as far as you can do accurate or smooth. So once again, if I go to the accurate and I do a line, it's not going to be very smooth, but if I double click on there and I smooth that out and do a line, it's going to make that nice smooth edge, which is a lot better, especially if you're working with a mouse. It's not very easy to make smooth lines. The thing I want you guys to be aware of with the pencil tool is if these are selected, um, this one, I'm going to select those. So it, if these boxes are selected, when you use the pencil tool, it has a smart feature to where, I must not have turned it on, to where when you cross paths, I must have turned it off by accident earlier. But what, what you need to be aware of is that sometimes, let's try that. When, <laughs> now it's not showing you. Sometimes when you try and draw with the pencil tool and you go to do another stroke, it redraws the line that you did. So double click on there. I chose to keep all of these off and it, um, will then allow me to draw. So I'm going to go ahead with my selection tool, highlight all of, our, all of those marks, and delete those for now. With, if you are using your pencil tool, if you feel more comfortable with that, once again, make sure that you are, if you're doing a shape, you are going to start where you finish, so it is a shape you can fill in later. I want to show you what I feel most comfortable with. This is how I'm going to do the avatar. I am going to use the pen tool. So the pen tool is the third one down on the left column. I just like the pen tool because I feel like I can 
draw more accurate with it, have better lines. So with the pen tool, how this works is if you just click, you're going to get straight lines. Ending at the beginning enter anchor point will allow you to close in that shape so you can fill it in later. And if you want curved lines, you are going to click and drag. So what I'm doing is when I click, I'm not letting go of my, my finger on the click and I am dragging that handlebar to where I want to curve that line. So once again, I ended at my beginning anchor point to fill that in. And what this allows us to do is we can switch from the stroke to the fill color and fill in that shape easily, which makes it really nice to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these shapes I just created and delete those and start on our avatar. So I'm using the pen tool. I want to make sure that I'm just working with the stroke so I can see what I'm working on underneath. So I'm trying to draw myself. I want to make sure I can see what I'm drawing. So I'm going to start up here on the top in my halfway point, my guide that I put in there. And I'm just put, clicking some anchor points, dragging some spaces. I don't like that one I just did. I went way off of my face. So I'm going to do Command or Control Z to undo that and then try and get that anchor point back where I wanted it. So I'm just slightly dragging to give a nice little curve. I'm going to end at this guide and then go straight up to the top where I have that top anchor point. All I'm worried about right now is just simply drawing half of my face. So I'm going to go once again to my pen tool, go to my eyebrows. If I need a little curve, I'm clicking and dragging. If you notice now, I'm going down to this point of my eyebrow. If I go to try and go up here, because of this handle going this direction, it's pulling my line that way. So a thing that you need to be aware of when you're working with the pen tool is we can control this handlebar to go the direction we want it to go. So I'm going to hover over that handlebar, press Alt on your keyboard, Command on a Mac, uh, Alt on a, your keyboard, sorry, it's Alt on both, and I'm going to bring that handle up to the anchor point, and that way now I can control the way that that line goes. So anytime you're having a hard time having the line go the direction you want, you're going to hover over that handle and hold down Alt and move it back into the anchor point so you can control the direction. So with our avatars, we're just doing very minimalistic um, lines. We're not being super fancy with our drawing. So with the eye, I'm really just going to uh, do the top part of my eye here. And this handlebar is way too far, so I'm going to hover over it, do all, bring that in. And I'm going to bring this up here. I'm clicking and dragging and curving it. All right, we'll go back to our circle tool in a little bit for the eye. I'm going to do my nostril here. All right, and so since I have the outlines selected right now, some of the, these drawings might look a little weird, but we are going to fix it when we go and change their color. So I want to make sure I'm always going to the original anchor point to fill that shape in. If I'm not filling in that shape, it's going to not fill the color in nicely when I go to fill the color at the end. Going up to that original anchor point. All right, so I think we've got a good start so far. Let's go ahead and switch from our pen tool to our ellipse tool. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool, click and hold, go to my ellipse tool, and I'm now going to add my eye here. I'm going to add 
my wrist there. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back out so we can see a little bit. All right, so it's not really making a lot of sense yet, but I'm about to show you how it's going to make some sense. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the face shape. As you can see, we have a white stroke, no fill. But if I go to my eyedropper, I'm going to click on the closest part to my natural skin color and fill that in. Now we've got that color as the fill and no stroke. I'm going to go to my selection tool, select my eyebrow, go to my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to go ahead and select some area of my hair for there. I'm going to go to my selection tool and I'm going to select the top part of my eye that I was working with and I really just want this would be close to black so I'm gonna find an area that's pretty black there we go select my eyeball I have brown eyes so I'm gonna go ahead and I could go right on my eyes but because I have glasses and there's uh, some glare from the light it's making my eyes look a little green so I'm gonna pick some color of my hair that's close to my eye color. Then I'm gonna select the inside circle. I want this to be the same color as up here. So I'm gonna go to my eyedropper tool. I drop right on there. Now it's starting to take shape a little bit. So let's go to my nostril and the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna eye drop right here. Let's go to selection tool, select my lip, and I can select both at the same time if I want them to be the same color. So I'm gonna hold down shift, select both of them. If you notice, because I have just a stroke, we've got these points coming off on the side. But if I go to my eyedropper tool and pick a part of my lip color, it's going to fill the inside and get rid of those lines on the end. So our avatar is starting to take shape. And we just need to copy this and add it and flip it to the other side. So with our selection tool, I'm going to select over all of this. Notice that it selected my face. It selected all of these pieces inside the face, but it did not do anything with the bottom because we have that layer locked. So I'm going to do Command C, Command V to copy it. Go to Object. Transform, Reflect, and we are going to reflect it vertically. If you don't know the difference which one you should choose, horizontal or vertical, it shows you the line that it will switch it on so you can understand in it. That I'm a visual person, so I need to know. Um, so I look at those lines, so it's going to be vertical, say OK, and now it's switched to the other side. Now I can simply move this into place and get that on there. Now my face is starting to take shape. So we can, for the sake of just um, making it a little bit easier in the end, we can select with the selection tool, I select it, my face shape, my face shape, go to our Pathfinder tool and unite them. So click to unite. If you do not see your Pathfinder tool in the properties panel, go up to window and Pathfinder to open that up and you can unite them right there. So what that did was it united it with this one was on top of the other one so I lost half of my face but I can simply go up to Object, Arrange, Send to Back, and so that's gonna send that back to the back of the Layers panel. If I wanted to do the same thing with my lips, I can select my top lips and unite them and unite my bottom lip. Oh, sorry, press the wrong one. There we go. Now those are solid pieces. So what I'm gonna do next is I want to give myself some teeth. So I'm just going to simply, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. 
with pen tool. I'm simply going to just be kind of messy with this, but I'm making sure that the shape is within my lips. So I'm going to go in straight to the edge, but make sure that it's covering my lips. So when I turn this white for my teeth, it's going to look kind of funny at first. But if we go to our selection tool, make sure the entire thing's selected, and we go to object, arrange, and we send it backwards, which if you look at the shortcut, it's uh, the little, um, on a Mac, it's the little squiggly and the bracket. So you can keep doing that until it goes behind your lips. So there, now you have your teeth behind your lips. So I think we need a couple more things to finish our avatar off. We need to create a neck. We need to do our hair and give ourselves a shirt, okay? So next, what I'm going to do, go back to my pen tool. I'm not necessarily worried about what this looks like underneath my head because I'm going to change it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw and I want to change this handle. So I'm hovering over the handle doing Alt, bringing that in there. I'm going to bring this over here and just do kind of like a nice little loop for my shirt. Once again, I'm hovering over the handle, pressing Alt, bringing that handle in so I can do the other part of my neck and I, I went a little way too far over here but I think it'll be all right. We'll, I'll uh, probably put my hair over it and I'm going to end with the original anchor point to make sure that's over there. Now once again this looks kind of funny it's covering my lips so I'm going to select it and go to object arrange send it backwards so I'm going to send it back all the way back behind my head Make sure that it's behind there. I might even all go to arrange, send it all the way to back for now. All right. So coming along next, what we need to add is some hair. So I have curly hair. I'm going to go to my pen tool and I'm going to start on this side and I'm just simply going to kind of just go around my curves a little bit. It does not have to be perfect. Uh, if you don't like an anchor point you did, you do, can do Control or Command Z, get rid of that anchor point and keep going. If you need to change a handle, if you have like a, like more uh, pointy hairs and you need to do pointier areas, you can um, do, here I'll show you down here, I just simply am clicking to give points instead of dragging. So here we've got some more straight hair, and of course you'd want to do a, maybe a smaller scale if you're doing up by your bangs, something like that. So I'm going to go back to getting my hair in there. Oops, I want to make sure, I want to make sure I'm getting my hair back around here, so I'm going to take that back off. And there we go. And I'm not really worried about underneath right now. I'm going to be putting this part behind. So I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool and I'm going to try and grab some of my hair, whatever color you want. It's over part of my face right here and it's over part of my neck. So I kind of want it to stay over my neck but not over my face. So I'm going to do the shortcut control or command um, and bracket and bring it back until it goes back behind my face but over my neck. Now I'm going to do the other side of my hair and I'm not really worried once again about underneath my... I'm going to be putting this underneath my head and I'll go ahead and add a couple bangs in a little bit but so I'm just kind of Clicking and dragging, doing some curls. I'm going to worry a little bit about what it's going to look like over my neck, but not under. Oh, that might be too far. Alright, so then I'm just going to end with my original anchor point. 
I don't really have a hairstyle that goes over half my head, but if you do, that would look great. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the shortcuts, control or command in the brackets, and bring it back behind my head, but over my neck. And I might actually want this one to go uh, behind my neck. Let's do that. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to give myself a little bit of bangs. Um, I do have some of my hair going over part of my forehead. So I'll just go ahead and add that area there. And the reason I did this in addition to that is so that I could put some of my hair behind and then some on top. And so I might want to add a little bit to the other side. And what this can do for you is as you're working on your your hair is if you have multicolored hair, you can change the colors. And I know some of you have really cool hair, like let's say this side of my hair is blue. Let's find it on blue. There we go. And we would make sure that this is that same color blue. And then we might want to make sure that this comes on top. So there we can have our two color hair. Some of you might have some highlights in your hair. So if you wanted to add some highlights, we can go ahead and add a little bit of a highlight in here. I'm going to hold down Alt, bring in that handlebar so I can do a straight line on the ends. and ending with the original anchor point. All right, that's not looking great, but you will get the point. So say that's just a highlight, or let's say I put some pink in my hair, put some pink over there. So you can add highlights to your hair. You can add as much detail as you want as you're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and put my brown hair back. All right. So next we need to make sure I have a shirt on. So I'm going to go um, to, I'm not, not really worried about what it's looking like underneath, but um, this is going to be the top layer right now. Um, oh goodness, I'm doing that one. So I, my shoulder was way up on the other side, but uh, let's go here. All right. So let's say I want to, I'm going to actually use my eyedropper and grab one of these burgundy colors for my shirt. There we go. And go to selection tool, make sure it's selected and send that back. Actually, it's going to go all the way to the back. So just for sake of time, range, send it all the way to the back. And there we have it. Our avatar is looking pretty good. I want to give some definition between my chin and my head, so I'm going to select my neck section, and it looks like I might not have put it all the way back where I wanted it, maybe I did. Double click on our color, make it a little bit darker. So there we have it, pretty simple, pretty easy. Let's go, before we're going to save this at the end, we're going to go to our layers panel and completely delete our background picture. We no longer need that. If you wanted to add a color to your background, go to your shape tool, go to rectangle, cover our shape. And actually that's, well, that might be the same color as my skin. Let's see. Let's go with a little bit of gray, I guess. And I'm going to go to object range, send that all the way to back. Now we have a background color on there. All right, so you can make this as detailed as you want. You can add your glasses. I'll show you a way that you can add your glasses here in a second. But you can also add highlights. So if you notice here on my finished product, I have shapes in here that kind of have some highlighted areas. I put my nose in there and gave it a gradient. We talked about you guys already know how to do a gradient. 
But let me go ahead and show you how you can add those highlighted areas really quick. So you would just simply go to your pen tool and let's say I want to add a highlight to my nose area. This is not going to be perfect, but so I'm just adding a shape where that light would be hitting my nose. I want to make sure that it is white. And then I'm going to go up to effects and stylize. Um, maybe the other side. Let me find the effect really quick that I want. Oh, blur. All right, so you're going to go to blur, and you're going to go to Gaussian blur. And I have preview on so I can see what it's going to look like. But I'm kind of just blurring out those edges, saying OK. And if it's too bright, we can go over to our appearance panel in the properties window, and we can change the opacity down to where we just have a, like a subtle highlight in there. So we could add a highlight on our forehead if we want it to. So I'm not worried too much about making this perfect right now. Go to effects. We can apply the Gaussian blur that we already applied so we don't have to go through the whole selection process again. Go over to our opacity and change the opacity on there as well. So you can get as detailed as you want on your avatars. You can add a um, gradient to your neck so that it's not all the same color. If you want it to, you would go over to your gradient window. If you don't see your gradient window there, once again, go up to Windows, go to Gradient, add that, and we can add in a gradient on here change the direction of it so we would change it I think about 90 degrees and we would want to make sure that we are adding um, some swatches so let me add the swatches we need so I'm going to go to the color of my skin and I'm going to pull that swatch in there from the color of my skin and that will and let me make it a little bit darker of my color of my skin and I'm going to pull that in there. Make sure I turn my face back to where it was. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull it in. Come on. Go into my swatches. All right. Now I've got the lighter skin and the darker skin. So if I go to my gradient tool, Click on here and I'm going to drag that darker gradient into the darker skin color into the one side and the lighter skin to over here. You could double click on there and darken it up a little bit as well as you go. So you can move your, your sliders around to control the gradient on your neck. And there's that. Lastly, what I want to show you really quick, if you have glasses. So I put added a gradient to my background. I actually look kind of good, but let's go ahead. We don't want that for now. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to bring in my picture again. File, place, place in my picture. I'm going to zoom in. Once again, what I want you to do when you are doing your glasses, I only want you to worry about half of your glasses. So you're going to do your pen tool around. And I've got it fill color, so I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I just changed it to um, the stroke real quick. So I'm just going around the outer edge of my glasses. So I'm clicking and dragging as I need to. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to click and drag on the inside area of my frames. And I'm not worried too much about making this perfect just for sake of time. Just clicking and dragging. You can always fine tune your strokes later on if you needed to. You go into your direct selection tool and you can 
fix up your lines a little bit if you need it to. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make both of these. I'm going to, I didn't lock that layer, so see how that moves when you click on it. I'm going to select both of these. So I held down shift, selected on both with my selection tool. I'm going to change it to where they're both gray. I'm actually go on my eyedropper tool and grab black from my glasses. Now go to my selection tool. I've got them both selected. Go over to Pathfinder. Instead of uniting them, I'm going to minus the top object, minus from the front. So that inside one was the second one I did. So when I minus that, there are my frames. So we can see my glass frames. There we go. And then once again, just as you did with the face, you would copy, paste, object, transform, reflect, reflect it vertically. And so since the glasses are my, were a little bit crooked on my face, I'm probably going to have to straighten these out just a little bit. Line them up as you want. Select both of them by holding down shift. And now you would reunite them, unite them and you have your glasses. So that is one way you can make your glasses. Last thing we are going to do is we're going to save this and we are going to turn it in for our assignment. So once again, be as detailed as you want, adding some nice gradients. You can do your nose in here, add a gradient like you did to your neck. You can add any highlights you want. You can add highlights on your lips. Um, I, I had it a couple darker areas here. You can change the color of your hair, add highlights to your hair. Have fun with it. When you are done, you're going to go to File, Save As. Make sure that you already should have put the name, your first name, underscore avatar. You're going to choose where you want it to go. So I want it to go to my hard drive. So I'm going to choose my hard drive. Baldwin Indians. I've got a lot of places I put it. I'm not going to actually do that right now. Um, and then make sure that you are saving it as an Adobe Illustrator file, an AI file. So you're going to save that. That way you can work on it later on if you need to um, fix it, change it. If we're working on this for multiple days, make sure you're saving it as an AI file. Next, you're going to go to File, Export, Export As. This time, make sure your name's correct. Make sure it's saving to where you want it to save. Now you're going to change this format to a JPEG. You're going to say Use Artboard, and you're going to Export. Once you're finished, this is what you need to do to turn in. You're going to be turning in the JPEG to me. So. You need to make sure that you are going to your one view and you are going to your waffle menu and you are going to open up OneDrive. Once you open up OneDrive, you are going to be saving it to your Com Art, uploading it to your Com Art folder. So you go to your Com Art folder, go to upload, you upload the files from where you saved where you saved it to. Then you're going to go to Teams. You're going to open up Teams and go to your class notebook. Should I add Teams already open? That way you wouldn't have to wait on it. I apologize. You're going to go to your class notebook. Open up the navigation panel, go to your name. You should have already organized your folders underneath your name to first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter and delete it the extra ones you didn't need. Go to the third quarter. You should have an untitled page already there to start out with. You're going to click on it to title it balance underscore or dash avatar. Then you're going to click on the body of the page, insert, picture, make sure you're choosing picture, from file, choose where you saved it from. 
I'm just for the sake of this, I'm going to grab a um, screenshot I took of a project I was working on the other day just because it's fast. And you are going to insert it. Make sure that you see the picture show up when you're done uh, so that I can grade it easily. So that's how you know that you've imported it the correct way. All right, guys, I cannot wait to see your avatars. I'm super excited about this project and have fun. Let me know if you have any questions.